Hello and welcome to Me on Five, a show about Maine and its people. The COVID show that I did was about my grandfather who passed away in the 1918 Spanish flu in which millions upon millions died and several thousand here in Portland. And then I closed by talking about my own COVID shot. Uh, since then, COVID has resurfaced, as we all know from watching front page news every night. The Delta variant is killing more people. And all I can say to my fellow uh, Mainers out there, get the shot. And for those of you who are still hesitant, I simply would say to you, listen to your doctor as opposed to someone who is involved in national politics. I now want to move to a more fun topic for me. Ever since I started the, the Dairy Run show and this show, I've wanted to have somebody that has been on Jeopardy. I reached out to one man who I'd watched uh, faithfully. I never got a return phone call. I reached out to another person. She said she'd come on, but she never answered my emails. So finally, my friend Martha Burke sent me the phone number of my guest, Jamie Logan, who was just on Jeopardy recently and who won two nights in a row and went back for a third. Jamie, thank you so much for coming on this show. Glad to be I here. I have been trying, and folks, what's interesting about it is that Jamie uh, got my phone call when you were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's correct. How did you like it? It was amazing. I was actually out there um, with some Scrabble friends. We were doing an unofficial Scrabble tournament, um, and we spent a day at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I spent most of my time at the Beatles exhibit, um, uh, but overall, it was absolutely, uh, it was amazing. So you were out there not to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Some people actually fly out there for that reason. <laughs> You were there to for a Scrabble tournament. Yep, for um, an unofficial Scrabble tournament. Um, unofficial. We mean there's a difference between official and unofficial. There is. There is. Um, and you know, official tournaments are currently on hiatus um, yeah. at, for at least a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, a group of friends who are also tournament Scrabble players. Um, we took a road trip out there, uh, played Scrabble in between doing things like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think we played, um, overall I played 13 games in the two days we were out there, so. Uh, Jamie, I think I mentioned to you that my, my niece Liz uh, gave me a brick, it's about this big, it says uh, Dairy Run Mains Elvis, and she got that for me uh, right after I visited out there. I, I actually know or have met a few of the inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, uh, and uh, met uh, Priscilla Presley. Uh, which was a neat thing, and we talked about uh, the fact that her husband, of course, was the first inductee. Uh, so getting back to why you're here, Jeopardy. Jamie, you tried out many times for Jeopardy. Tell us about that process. You're going to take exams. Go ahead, tell me how that worked. Sure. So um, to get on, you have to go through um, a process of it, passing the online test, Getting the call to do an input, or getting the email that you pa that you pass the online test and are being invited to do an on or an in-person audition, and then um, after the in-person audition, you wait and wait and wait to see if you get the phone call inviting you out to Los Angeles. So the first time I took the online test was in college. Um, and I was shocked to get the email inviting me to an in-person <laughs> audition. Yeah. Um, I was in college in D.C. and I had to um, go to New York City to audition. Um, and then, you know, I did not get the call to get on that time. I took the online test again in college for College Jeopardy. Got called again to an in-person audition. Didn't get the call to L.A. that time. Um, and then every time I've been eligible since then, I've taken the online test. Um, I've gone to New York twice for auditions, Boston, um, and then this most recent time, the third time that I passed the online test for regular Adult Jeopardy, um, I got the call from LA. Um, I initially did not pick up the phone because it wasn't a 207 number. Right, right. <laughs> and um, thankfully, they called me back on Monday. And, um, they called you back. They called me back. They had called on a Friday. I they didn't, called you back. They That's called, how bad they wanted you. <laughs> yeah, right. I um, and I was told, you know, you're We'd love to have you come on, you know, follow these protocols for COVID and all of this. 
and I had about two weeks to get the plane ticket, get ready, um, study, <laughs> and get out to LA uh, to tape. <laughs> Jamie, you know what blows my mind? Is how many contestants say they study? How do you study? You'd have to t <laughs> I mean, the Encyclopedia Britannica and read them from the beginning. I mean, how does one study so, from Jeopardy? In a, in a way, you know, I've been asked that question a lot. Yeah. And one of the things I say is I've been studying my whole life. Yes. You know, watching the show since I was a kid, right. as early as I can remember. I remember, you know, the you know the old million dollar bridge. Yes. Um, so my mother's family is from South Portland. I grew up in Portland, and my mother still loves to tell the story that when I was like six or seven, we were coming home from my grandparents one night. The bridge was up, and I just threw a temper tantrum out. in the back seat, <laughs> screaming, "I'm gonna miss the final <laughs> question!" I so can't believe it. <laughs> literally, my whole life watching the show is how I've studied. Um, going to trivia nights, even yeah. in high school, before we could drink. Trivia My friends night. and I would go to the bar and play trivia. We'd drink our diet sodas and bleachers in Portland. Yeah, yeah. We were, Bleaches, um, sure. yeah, we won one night and I yeah. got a gift certificate for the bar and people were like, what are you guys going to do with this? <laughs> um, but, uh, and my husband um, is a big trivia player. So oh, oh, Bill Logan, a yeah. lawyer folks, a <laughs> well respected, highly respected lawyer. So we, um, always, um, you know, not as recently now that we have a toddler, but we go to trivia night in the Augusta area. Yeah. Um, when I lived in DC, I'd go to trivia night there. I listen to trivia podcasts. So you are a trivia expert. Yeah. You know, Jamie, one of the things that I enjoy about doing this show is I'm able to connect my own life with the person I'm talking to. And when I was a child, I watched Tic-Tac-Doe, uh, the, the $64,000 question. I watched all those trivia shows, uh, and my mother used to get a kick out of it uh, that I would uh, answer the questions. What people don't realize is that the questions that you get on Jeopardy, some of them are actually, quote, easier, unquote, than the ones of this written test, correct? You know, I don't know, honestly, well, for sure. I, I, I think... I, I took the test, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, I took the test in person at the Eastland Hotel. I'm going to tell you, Jamie, they, they, they knew that they, they could correct them easy because out of 50 questions, I might have got maybe six right. They're asking, like, how many stars in the, uh, in the universe? And what, was the, <laughs> what, what was the material of Queen Victoria's uh, uh, coronation dress? So I am so impressed that you could do that. Jamie, I want to talk to you, ask you some questions specifically about you going out there. We know, first of all, no one would accuse you of not having persistence. I would have asked you out there in the hall, why were you so persistent? I mean, after a man asked someone to the prom 10 times, they, why were you so persistent? It's like I said, it's something that I have just always loved since I was a kid, screaming answers at the TV. Um, and I, I don't know, it's just always been a goal. And I set my mind dream. to that goal since I was a kid and just kept after it. And as I mentioned to you though, part of that goal was never being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> She comes on and says to me, oh, I'm really uncomfortable being on TV. Says, Excuse me, you just applied for the biggest TV show on the air. I just, I like to answer trivia questions, yeah. and it never even... So you could have worn a mask if you, they let you, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, Jamie, uh, when you got out there, so you fly out to Los Angeles, uh, did your husband go with you? He did not, no. Okay. You went alone? Yeah. Oh my goodness! So do they do they pick you up with a limousine? Or do, you, do you take a cab? No, or what? you find your own way. You find your own way. There's yeah. no big sign, uh, Jamie Logan. No. And so you, you stay at a decent hotel, I assume. I have no idea. I stayed at the first one I found that looked okay. They to told me. you to get your own hotel. Yep. No way. Yep. So you get your own hotel. So and, and you get your own transportation to the to the station. You walk in. You show them an ID. They let you in. Yeah, right. pretty much, and along with all the extra COVID protocol and everything. And, and so, did you feel that you were being treated like a, like a superstar, or do you think <laughs> you were being treated like okay? I, I mean, how did you feel you were being treated? Like uh, a human being, which is all you can ask for. But no special treatment. No, thank goodness. <laughs> no, because you would, uh, me, I would have gone, excuse me, where's the spread for the shrimp cocktail? So you, do you have a green room that you sit in while you're waiting to go on? Um, no, we hung out. Um, it's a group of contestants because yeah. they film five shows in a day. And you're hanging out. Yep, and they're wonderful people, the other contestants. The other contestants. We had such a good time How that about the day staff? Did you like the oh, staff? They were so nice. They were nice. So okay. nice. 
yeah. um, because everybody, well, you know, you go on someone's show, Ellen DeGeneres, and she got kind of, you know, she wasn't kind, whatever. But so you had the guest, uh, the guest host was from 60 Minutes. Yep, Bill Whitaker. Bill Whitaker, did you like him? Yes, he was such a kind guy. Really? Yeah, and I thought he did a wonderful job hosting. Yeah. So, so okay. So, but Jamie, the show starts. And we know you're filming, you're not live. There's a live audience still there, right? Uh, I, because I think of the way the protocols worked, it was the other contestants for the day were in the audience. There, so you don't even have like a real audience. Right, which you, was, for me, I was that happy. That was okay. <laughs> the show starts, you're nervous. How do you even think to push that first button? You just g gear into it? I'll tell you, the buzzer is the hardest part. That's what people say. That was the hardest tell part. Tell us why. Um, because you have to time it exactly right. Um, you know, there's lights that come on to show you when you're able to buzz in um, and of course you know by the time you get on Jeopardy most everybody on the stage is going to know the answer so it's a matter of who's buzzing in um, and you get locked out if you buzz in too early. If you buzz in too early you're out. Yeah. Did that happen to For you at all? For a certain amount of time you can buzz back in. After did that happen to you? I'm you sure it did. But you didn't wouldn't have noticed. Right. So you can't push that button. If he comes out with a first word, and you know I can tell what it's going to be about, and you know the answer, you still can't do it. You got to wait till right. Uh, so point. like at home, I'm used to screaming, Scream, screaming it out. You know, my husband is very good at trivia, so we just whoever screams <laughs> it out first. Um, so you have to be fast. So I had to change that whole approach okay. to timing it with the buzzer. Uh, Jimmy, can I ask you what the amounts that you won each night? Is that something you can discuss? Yeah. Um, so the first night, um, thanks to um, a wonderful final Jeopardy category of classic right. albums, I what? knew <laughs> um, I knew that I had I was in second. So I knew that I had to pretty much bet everything. Um, and so I ended up with $32,200 that night. The first night. The first night. The second, the second night. night at 18000 And the third night when I came in second, um, the $2,000 for second place. OK. A uh, uh, question you may not be able to answer, and, and you can decline. Uh, when, when you get uh, paid, do they withhold from, for, for withholding? Do they withhold or just send you the check? I have no idea. Have you got the check yet? No. Oh, so you yeah. won't know until right. <laughs> I'll be interested. No, uh, because as we know, uh, 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 a very famous contestant, Richard Hatch on Survivor, first winner, uh, didn't pay his taxes. And actually, I think I think served time, if I'm not mistaken. And I think his argument was, well, he thought they were going to pay the tax. I forget what it was, but I felt very bad for, for him. Uh, and so uh, make sure that if they didn't withhold you. <laughs> I'm sure. And I'm sure my husband will. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of, I had Bob Crowley on this show, who was the winner of Survivor. And it was law in the line at the time. And my partner said, what's that got to do with the law? And I said, well, he would have had a 100-page contract. I want to know what was in it. Bob Crowley came on and said, I never read it. But you got, uh, it was, was it a, like 100 pages? I mean, lo a long contract? I don't think it was that long. But, but it was but quite long. Yeah, longer than I wanted to and read. And Bill read it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you can't negotiate it. You right. can't write back. I don't want to take this clause out. You and the big, the big thing in the clause in the, in the contract was that you were not able to disclose to anyone how you'd done. Correct. Could you tell your husband? I told Bill, um, yeah. but for two months, nobody, nobody else knew. You can't even hint. You can't even wink. Right. So I had to come up with a reason that I was going to be away for a few days in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. <laughs> My toddler at home. Um, so I told people. I had to go see clients in Denver. Right. And oh my! Because it's funny because some of the other contestants, I asked them like, "So what did you tell your family? Yeah. Like, what say? was your excuse?" And they're like, "Oh, they just, you know, didn't ask questions because we travel." And I was like, "Oh, like I, I leave Augusta, and people want to know what's <laughs> wrong." <you> <laughs> oh, I'm just going to a uh, uh, TV show. Uh, yeah. uh, I just think it's uh, so fascinating, Jamie. Uh, and uh, I, before we get to do, well, folks, we're going to do Jeopardy here for, for, for big bucks coming up. <laughs> but before we do, Jamie, you have uh, done a, a, a master's thesis on what, what you refer to as Little Italy here in Portland, because yeah. you have Italian heritage here in Portland. Yeah, um, my grandmother's, um, on my, my paternal grandmother, um, she grew up um, on Middle Street yes. in the building that now houses duck fat. Right, um, best french fries ever. Yeah. Yeah, right. So when I was doing my master's degree at the University of Maine, that's what I chose to focus on. Um, and it's fascinating, especially I wrote it 
Jeez, oh, seven years ago now, seven or eight years ago, um, the research and the writing, um, and even then, um, I closed it out with an observation about how the area was changing, because at the time, I, I lived on India Street myself. Yes. Um, lived down near Amato's, of yeah, course, yeah. Um, and, you know, I read what I had observed seven or eight years ago about how the neighborhood was changing. And right. I look at it now. Oh, my and God. <laughs> Million dollar condos. I don't even deals. recognize it. Yeah, no, so. it's different. Uh, I have to say, Jamie, you and I both went to King Middle School. Uh, I was living at the Felmouth Hotel just down the block here, and I had a choice to go to either King Middle School or Jack. And I just remember as a child that Jack was a fairly, uh, I don't know how to use the word tough, but it was kind of a, a, a tough neighborhood. So I opted for King. I had to walk farther. Uh, but I remember thinking, oh, geez, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a small, skinny kid, and I don't know if I. So I ended up going to King, and you also went to King. I did, yeah. Uh, which, and, and you went to Deering High School, where I have many friends uh, that went. I mentioned uh, one who just passed away a couple of days ago, tragically, Paul Soule, a great athlete from there. Uh, where did Jamie, I'm going to switch gears a little bit because I don't want to have any shot that we cannot do this Jeopardy game. So, folks, I was home and Jamie wrote me a note and said, I'll tell you what, why don't we do a little Jeopardy ourselves on some rock and roll trivia. So I did some questions. And, Jamie, the rules are going to be that if you uh, uh, match me or beat me, in general trivia, then I'm going to give you some final Jeopardy questions. I've written five of them out uh, at, at a very high rate per question. So first of all, you can give me your first question, uh, on, uh, and then we'll go uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to your question. All right. What do you got? All right, Jerry. Question number one. <laughs> what Beatles movie, released in 1965, was originally titled Eight Arms to Hold You? 65, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say, what is Magical Mystery Tour? The answer is help. Oh, my God, I was one <laughs> off. Oh, and by the way, um, I, <laughs> my Hard Day's Night was the first one. Oh, my God, that was a good question. I lose on that one. I'm going to give you yours, okay? Here we go. This petite, petite female artist from the 50s and 60s, is the only 60s rock star to reach the current number two popular song chart in December 2020 for a Christmas song that was first recorded in 1958, 62 years earlier. That would be Miss Brenda Lee with Rockin' Around the Christmas oh Tree. Oh, God. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yo, one to zero. Go ahead, give me my next one. <laughs> all right. We all know who did Mr. Tambourine Man. But what one-hit wonder sang Green Tambourine? Oh, my God. I'm almost going to cry. Who are the Lemon Pipers? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, uh, Jamie, I heard that song just the other day. Who? Okay, we're one for one. Here you go. Elvis's only wife, Priscilla, had this maiden name before she became Mrs. Presley in 1967. I should Ooh. know this. I should know this. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> you got me. Okay. What is Borja? <laughs> okay. My number All two. Right. Here we go. Well, one number one. three. Which member of the Yardbirds went on to be in Led Zeppelin? Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Alex, give me a minute. <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I'm done. Jimmy Page. Oh, <laughs> okay. Here's your third. You're going to chance to beat me here. Um, this huge teen idol who died tragically was a member of a family portrayed on television who had three generations of number one hits. Yet, this man is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ricky Nelson? Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Jamie. It was had to be in the form of a question. <laughs> Who is Ricky, Ricky Nelson? Nelson. <laughs> Jamie, you have just won two to one. We're now moving to final jeopardy. Oh, I know you got I know you got tears in your eyes, and I know you're <laughs> nervous. So we have... Um, Ricky Nelson isn't in the Hall of Fame? He is not. Wow. Now, by the way, when I was out there, they had an exhibit about him, but he was not in the Hall of Fame. Garden, garden Party is okay. one of my favorites. Uh, so we're doing general trivia, folks. And now I am Alex Trebek. Uh, okay. No questions for me. And this is a $5 question, uh, <laughs> Jamie. 
This suburb of Cairo is home to the world's largest man-made object and is the final burial, burial place of Pharaoh Cheops, also known as Khufu. Valley of the Kings? That would be Luxor. Luxor. No, the, the question would have been, what is Giza? Oh, the yeah, I should have had that. Yeah, that, that. Had that okay. <laughs> I need more coffee. No, yeah, you missed a $5 one on that one. This one is a $10 question, Jamie. We're moving up the ladder here. This word, one of the longest in the dictionary, was spelled correctly such that the contestant won $64,000 in the popular yet infamous, infamous TV show, $64,000 question, what is the word? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Oh <laughs> Jamie, you just won $10. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I swear to God, I don't think you're going to get that one. Number three. Once the world's largest cruise line, this line has the distinction of at one time having the world's largest moving object, the Queen Mary II, as well as other ships named for queens. What is the line? What is the name of the line? It's not the Scotia Prince. Is it, uh, is it the White Star Line? Did that go down with the Titanic? Well, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Uh, you might have been okay, but we were looking for the answer. Canard, I'm looking uh, for the judges. No, I'm sorry. I don't think you're going to know on that one, Jamie. But you're still $10. Here we go for another $10 question. This famous lawyer was part of the O.J. Simpson team, and along with F. Lee Bailey, won acquittal for O.J. Simpson by saying, if the glove does not fit, you must acquit. It's the one, is it the guy who's somehow related to the Kardashians that I'm supposed to know? Is it Kardashian? Is that no, his name? <laughs> it would be Johnny Cochran. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, we're moving along here, buddy. Okay, so far you've won, was it $10? Yeah. Here we go for another, here go for another $10 question. This main college was founded in 1794 and was named after the governor of Massachusetts. Beats Bowden or Colby? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Let's go with Bowden. Bowden College. Uh, Jamie, that is absolutely correct. Right. Okay, this is a, a final uh, Jeopardy question. Uh, you've now won $20. This is a $20 bonus uh, for a total of 40. It's going to be a difficult question. This main lawyer was named legendary lawyer by the main trial lawyers in 2017, has written two books, and has two television shows on the same channel. Who, Who is Derry Runlet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that was so much fun. <laughs> You know, Tom, Tom uh, uh, Handel, our station manager, said, well, he'll ask a question about who's a talk show host. Jamie, that was so much fun. I want to move back to your life now. You have a two-year-old son. Yep. Bill, very active little guy. Bill, and your husband, Bill, works for what you said is Main Care, which yep. is a, a, a big job. He's, he's kind of a lawyer for Main Care, right? Uh, no, he's not, he's not a lawyer for Main Care, but he's uh, senior well, management there. Management yeah. in terms of Main Care. Yep. Uh, but did practice with a uh, uh, law firm, Ir Irwin, Taddy, and Mo Morris, yep. very good lawyers. Uh, and um, when you went to college, where did you go to college? Uh, the Catholic University of America. Oh, you did? Yep, in D.C. And when you were there, what did you major in? I did politics with a uh, concentration in American government, and I minored in philosophy and minored in theology and religious studies. Well, I was also a government major at Bowdoin. Many, many pre-law people think that you should be a government to be a lawyer, but actually it doesn't matter. Uh, and did you like your government courses? I did, yes. Um, I did an internship with um, uh, Senator Ed Muskie oh, in wow. 1967, just before he ran uh, for um, the United for the, for the uh, vice presidency of the United States, uh, and um, uh, I enjoyed it down there in D.C. Did you like it there? I liked it to go to college. Yeah. Um, I am not a city person right. <laughs> per se, so I would not. I did not stay down there to live and work. Um, but I loved Catholic University and the right. campus, um, and the cultural opportunities in D.C., you know, being able to go to the Smithsonian on yes. the weekend and the right. National Gallery, right. that was absolutely amazing. Well, I enjoyed it. This was 1967. They had riots there that year. 
but I remember uh, back then, folks, you could walk around the Capitol. There was no security. You could walk into the Senate. You could show them a, a card. They, they walk around anywhere, anywhere you wanted to go. You could stop by senators' offices and say hello to your friends. It was a wonderful, a, a, indeed, a wonderful summer. Did you think you were going to go into law or something, some sort of government service? Um, I thought that I would probably go into politics, um, either as, really? an, as an aide or something like that. Yes. Um, and I did work at the State House for right. several years. Um, but you know, now I'm what did primarily you do at the state house? I was a legislative aide, um, you were? and then I was the communications director for a short time. You were? Yep. Um, and then I've been working for myself for oh, um, five years now. And what are you doing now? Uh, primarily writing, um, writing. and some consulting um, on social media and things like that. And when you do your Scrabble tournaments, I think you said to me, I said, well, you're a champion, and you were so humble about it. Well, I'm not really a champion. And I said, well, how do you stand in the state of Maine? I think you said you're, you're, you're the number two player in the state of Maine. Out of, I think, four. <laughs> so I'm right there in the middle. <laughs> so. But still, so, but I'm impressed because I do national track. And when you go to a national event, it's, it's special, isn't it? I mean, you feel like you're, you're, you're part of something special. I want to get back to Jeopardy as we close. When you were on the, the show, would you say that you had at that moment the greatest possible adrenaline rush that, that a person could get? Or were you just like in, in the moment? Um, I would say it's a combination. I was so terrified <laughs> to be on TV. You were terrified. I was so excited, but I was also absolutely terrified. You watched yourself since then. Yeah. When you watched yourself, did you think that you looked terrified? Did I don't you? know. It's hard to tell because I knew that I was. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I had an adrenaline rush with the final question on the first yeah. night once I saw that classic albums come up. <laughs> so yeah, this is this way. You sound like a stupid question, but for me, I would have had a difficult time after winning that first night to not go out and celebrate. You didn't go out and start drinking a lot. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you have. We, I had about ten or fifteen minutes before they filmed the next one. Oh, so, so. you're doing it. You're doing it ten minutes later. Yeah. So you don't have all night long to go home and sleep. No. And go, oh my God! Right? I went home. I went went off. Um, you know, went off stage, changed my sweater, fixed my hair, went right, went back on. And so won the second match within 15 or 20 minutes after the first one. Yep. And then you did the third one and right and, after that, yeah. Right. So it was all in one afternoon. So you were all done in the afternoon. Yep. Did you did you sleep well that night? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> you did. Especially knowing he, you do fifty. That dollars, made it easier. Fifty thousand dollars richer. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Jamie, when I pay you today, uh, <laughs> uh, I want you to, to uh, do what you want with this uh, huge amount of money that I'm going to give you. But if you give the money to charity, you can say to people, "I went on two quiz shows, and on uh, one of them, I gave my entire winnings to charity." <laughs> uh, Jamie, I cannot thank you enough for coming here today. Um, I've um, done a lot of shows. I've had some famous people on here, including Brenda Lee uh, and F. Lee Bailey. Uh, and uh, you just fulfilled the dream for me. <laughs> so now I don't have to go on Jeopardy. <laughs> I just have to listen to how you, a good time that you had. So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> thank you for watching Me on Five. Uh, and Jamie, thank you so much uh, for being such a champion. All right. Thank you, Derry. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>